Hi, I'm Lee Sam Miller with W Cushing, and welcome to March's Third Thursday with Lee Sam. In this issue, we're going to take nibs and nabs, ugly wool. We all have ugly wool. What's ugly to us may not be ugly to somebody else, and we're going to recreate it. Uh, I want to thank Rug Cooking Magazine. We work in conjunction with each other. And be sure to look at the latest issue of Rug Cooking Magazine. A lot of great articles. Um, very good information within this magazine. So this is the latest Rug Hooking Magazine. Be sure to get it. It's March, April, May. What we're going to be doing today, and this is from the dye book, Beautiful Wool in the Dye Kitchen with Lee Sam, 70 dye recipes, which is very generous, and you'll get the dye recipe for today. But just a word of caution as um, we're getting a lot of phone calls. For our normal wools, we do not give out the dye recipes. Uh, they are the wools that come out of our dye kitchen that have been calculated and carefully formulated. So you have enough dye recipes in here to create what you would like. Also, we always give you a recipe when we do a dye demo, which is very generous. So within this beautiful wool book, on page 80, is a table that I put in. And you can pull it up for yourself in the book. It tells you what your base wool is, what you dye with, how much, and what you end up with. This, is in, this works really well if you have a purple plaid, you add khaki, uh, you'll get a, something else into here, veins for leaves and grapes. So this is crucial if you want something specific out of your scraps. We are not dying from this today, but this is a very good point in the book, a very useful tool. We also show you how to use your nibs and dabs and dye for antique black. But today we're doing a layering process. So, um, but just so you are aware, those are in the book, ready for you to use if you have the book. Today what we're going to do, and I'm gonna set the pan so you can see it, our dye recipe is one teaspoon of red grape, one teaspoon of chartreuse, one teaspoon of American Beauty, and four cups boiling water. Why are we going with such a high concentrate? I'm going with a lot of dark wools. It needs to seep down through layers. A lot of reasons, but these are the three. And you're worried about measuring out quarters, four times, etc. This is our dye spoon, and it's for larger quantities uh, that we manufacture right here at W. Cushing. And it has a teaspoon and a half a teaspoon for level measures if you don't want to go four quarters, you know, etc. Okay. So come on over, we're gonna come on over and I'm gonna set the pan. It's a nice sunny day. There may be a little bit of glare, but that's okay. I've got two big, huge pots, as you can tell, full of scraps, okay? And I know that some people will say, oh my God, I love that houndstooth. Well, I, well, you know, sometimes when you just got a little bit left over, you are just gotta get rid of it or it just doesn't fit your current needs. This is the time to make something good. Will this be a background? Will it be pieces for an oriental? Will it be pieces for a geometric? Who knows? And I will post a picture of what the wools look like before and how they turn out at the end, as I always do. So stay tuned to uh, Rug Cooking Magazine's Facebook page and that'll be posted. Now with this, when you have herring bones, a lot of times the white or the gray in between shows up too much for us. So this is a good method to get rid of that and make your herring bone a little more useful. And like I said, they can be different sizes, different colors. Uh, they can be pretty dark or a medium. And I'm just pulling out to what's gonna fit in here. And as you can tell, these are really just nibs and nabs. But I want this bottom floor. This is the bottom floor, okay? We're in the bottom floor of Macy's, or Bamberger's as it used to be, where all the bargains are. But this is the bottom floor, and that will allow you to, um, we'll take a, the darkest dye, and I'm gonna do the darkest dye first, and all the other layers will seep through. So you don't wanna really put your lights on here. You wanna put more of your darks or your bolds. Um, and that'll help you. Now let's get this one in here. And sometimes if you have a thinner wool, 
and you want to thicken it up, this is a great process. If it's more of a trouser weight, you can thicken it up and possibly use it. This also works because they're little pieces for applique. So if you're also an appliqueer, this will give you a whole nice little stash. So here's my first layer, and I'm going to put my first color on, which is my red grape in. It's one teaspoon of red grape in four cups of boiling water. Now, here we go. I am just going to pour it, okay? I'm just going to pour. And yes, this is like a huge commercial lasagna pan, and that also allows me to have um, many layers without having the water run over. And so now I'm going to move it around. If you want it to be flatter, and not everything is covered because you've got more layers coming, and you can add, you could do a second one if you wanted. Um, you can do a lot of different things, but it's really sucking up this bottom piece. But notice I'm not doing this. I'm moving it with the point of my spoon. And the reason I'm moving it with the point of my spoon is I want this to get into every little nook and cranny that it can, okay? And when it gets into every little nook and cranny like this, then we know. And it may not cover it all. It may at the end, but we're not really sure. Now, I'm not, I am not going to set this at all. Uh, it is not going to set. So we're just going to do that, just like that. And now I'm going to go to the second layer. My second layer um, is going to have the chartreuse on it. And when it has the chartreuse on it, we're going to, that's a brighter color, so we're going to go a little bit lighter. And all I'm doing is muddling it up a little bit and uh, putting this on. You don't know, it may take it all, it may not. It is kind of a fun thing. It's a fun thing to do with your friends on a Saturday. You can do this in your turkey roaster for smaller quantities. There's a lot of things that can be done with this to have some fun and get the whole thing set up. So, and if you notice, these have all been soaked. All the wools have been soaked. I soaked them with the Lemon Joy. Um, I made sure that everything was there so that they are wet going on so they will absorb the dye. And like I said, if you wanted to put a second dose of the red grape, you could. That's not a problem. And here's my second layer. So there's my second layer. My second layer is going to be the chartreuse. Okay? So I am going to pour my chartreuse, which I'm going to make sure that I get it here, there, and everywhere. And I probably could have used a second four cup of chartreuse, but that's okay. Um, and then the second, this one here, the bright, it's taking it up, but it's not really taking it up. Uh, in the centerpiece, I questioned whether that was real wool, and that's okay. So now we're moving both layers around. As you can tell, you can see the bottom, we're moving both layers around and both layers are going to get a hit of both colors. And you do want to move it. You don't want this to be a flat pan die where it's a solid. Um, we really don't need it to be a solid. We don't like it to be a solid. We all like motion in our wool. And this is one way to add the motion. And I'm not setting this at every layer. I don't, there's no need to. You can pour it and let it absorb at the top if you choose. I am gonna use a vinegar, one cup of vinegar. But what I'm gonna do first, since I am using um, dyes in the red family, I am gonna pour half of my mordant. Your vinegar is your mordant, okay? Your vinegar is your mordant. So I'm going to pour half of my mordant over here so it goes to both uh, sections here. And so I have, it was a quarter cup of vinegar and then I added to a cup of uh, water. And I'm just going to give it one good swish so it will set. There we go. 
And now I'm ready for the top layer, which is the American Beauty. And the American Beauty I do want to do with a lighter layer. And I have enough with this pan. This pan is about four inches thick, three to four inches tall. It's a commercial uh, baking lasagna pan. You can do smaller quantities in an enamel uh, lasagna pan, and that would work just as well. Um, this is only a smidgen of the scraps we have. So I'm gonna put this down, and when I'm putting it down, notice I'm not wringing it out. By not wringing it out, I'm letting the water seep through, so we are getting a little bit more water and more of the color bottling that we want. And let's get some, this is a nice light one, and we'll get that one in there. And I do love this pan for this reason. It really does take in a lot of wool. It allows for a lot of um, blending and a lot of scraps to come through. So we just are going to finish this. This is not what you wear your good clothes for. This is a messy dye, uh, which is why I have on messy clothes. You get wet, you get splashed dye on you. So make sure you're not wearing a great shirt that you don't, that you really care about. And you can see the chartreuse has disappeared, but some of the red grape is coming through. Look at that. So now I'm gonna pour the American Beauty on the top of it. And if I wanted to, I could go another two layers with this. Um, I won't for time's sake, um, but I could put another two layers. And if I were gonna put another two layers on, okay, if I was gonna put another two layers, what I would do is I would repeat the process and maybe even three layers. I'd start with chartreuse, one teaspoon, and then I would also go again to the um, red grape, one teaspoon. So if I was going to do that, that is what I would do to add a little brightness. And as you can see, look at the water level. That's what you have to remember because you are putting wet wool in there, which is adding besides the uh, four cups of boiling water dye, okay? So there we are. Now, can you use citric acid for this? You most certainly can. You can sprinkle citric at every layer to make sure that they set. But when you do sprinkle the citric, it doesn't model as much because you've set that dye, okay? And again, in your turkey roaster, you can do this as well. You'll probably get three to four layers in your turkey roaster. No, it's not as big, but you will get uh, three or four layers into it. And always have extra like I do here because it's always a lot of fun to see this. Um, and you always wanna have extra. You don't wanna end up cheating it, okay? You just don't want to end up cheating it. And you make sure it's covered, and I will go back through at the end and make sure it's covered. But look at the water level. And I think I am going to mix another chartreuse and pour it on top. And I'm going to mix another uh, red grape and pour it on top. And I think I'll end up with five layers. And I think the five layers would be great. Now, like I said, this is a commercial lasagna pan. It is stainless, it's not aluminum, um, but you can do it in an enamel lasagna pan. Uh, you can buy them any place, probably online. Um, you can do it in your turkey roaster, or I would not do this in a small, small pan. You won't get as much as the overall modeling and the layering. So you have to make sure it can accommodate, look at the water, make sure it can accommodate the water, make sure it can accommodate the wools that you want, okay? So, there it is. I'm gonna put more vinegar onto it, and later on I'll add two more layers, and then after the video airs, I will also post the pictures of this dyed, because it's quite, it's gonna be quite handsome, and look at this, we actually got orange something bled and we have an orange in there which will be interesting so you'll get a lot of fun things 
Again, it's not repeatable, but it makes your rug unique. The wool or, or your applique will make it unique by doing this. And you have a whole tray, three, four, five layers of one of a kind. Um, and this is really a fun, fun thing to do. So I'm going to put the vinegar on this again. Um, and then I may do a few more layers and then I would turn it on and I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to show you one thing because I don't, I did mention the citric. When you go to do the citric, ours isn't in here, you're going to sprinkle it like salt. You just sprinkle it. You don't pour it because then it sets too quick. So you could even move it into a salt shaker, but just sprinkle it with your hands. Don't pour it. And that will give you the same effect if you don't have the white vinegar. Honestly, the white vinegar does set it a lot better. And it sets, it, um, it sets the dye more completely, especially for Cushing dyes. Now, things that affect your dyeing. We've gone over them before, but I want to go over them one more time. Okay? Your water will affect the dye. If you have well water that has high minerals, high salt, um, that will affect it. If it's on a softener system, that will affect your dyeing. If you have town water and you happen to get the water the day they fluoride the water, it will turn out differently when there's no fluoride in the town water. Town water is not always the same. However, they're minor discrepancies. I don't advise bottled water because that's not always the same. Second thing is the heat, how hot when you mix it. That's why the electric tea kettle is so, so important. When it clicks off, it's the right temperature to mix your dyes. Also, the amount of dye and your base wool, base yarn, that will all affect your color. So take all of that into mind when you start to dye. And that looks like a really beautiful pot. I really like it, and I could sit in here, as you can probably tell, and do this for about hours now, but I won't. And I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to put it on medium heat, and I'm going to put it on for 20 minutes. I want it on for 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, I'm going to check, and if this is not almost clear by me doing this, then I'm going to put it on for another 10 minutes. You have enough water in here that your wool will not burn. Your wool will not burn. Uh, it's when you run out of water. And the most it should be is 30 minutes. And I chose these colors because they're nice spring colors. They add to it. You can use any color combination you would like. So here we're turning ugly nibs and nabs, pieces we're not going to use, into beautiful pieces to be used in rugs. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope that you've learned something from it and that you'll experiment and post pictures to us to show us what you've done with it. And right after the video posts, I will post the pictures of before and after so you can see it. So until April, I wish everybody a happy month and I will see you the third Thursday in April with some fun new things. Thanks and have a great day.